Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to change your presets, sounds, patches, etc. using MIDI. So for example, instead of having to step on your pedal for your amp or amp modeler to turn on your distortion when you go into the chorus, the computer will do this for you by sending MIDI data at the correct time in the song. I personally do this to control three different devices, my Line 6 Helix for guitar amp modeling and effects, my TC Helicon Voice Light 2 for vocal effects, and my Boss RC300 Looper. I will be demoing this using my Line 6 Helix, but the ideas can be applied to any other MIDI controlled devices. You're just going to have to look through your manual on how to change your specific device, which is something I'm going to be going over using the Helix as an example. Also, if you haven't watched the previous videos on how I set up this session that we have here for the click track and the synchronized backing tracks, the links are in the description down below. And again, any DAW will work for this. So a few things to go over with MIDI. We have channels, program changes, and control changes. If you already know what these are, you can skip ahead a little bit, but the channel will basically be what device you're controlling. So like I said, I control three different devices. The Helix reads on channel four, my Looper reads on channel three, and then my Voice Live reads on channel two. You don't want to send MIDI data to one device and all of them read it, so you set them to different channels. So a program change will be what preset you're controlling, usually for a specific song. So for example, this is my Helix right here, so I have a bunch of different songs mapped out to each of these presets right here. Program changes are going to select the specific patch, for example, and then the control changes, let me load up one of these. And the control changes will change the individual patches, so it'll turn on my delay or turn on my wah pedal or so on and so forth. Very basic way of describing it, but I mean, I'm not a MIDI expert. Hopefully this will get you through it. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm personally gonna be using a song. I'm not gonna be using the backing track songs. I'm gonna be using the actual song just to demo this so you can see how this works. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new track up here, and we're gonna do external MIDI, actually. Make sure that your output is set to your output device, so your audio interface. Hit create. All right, next you need to connect a MIDI cable from the audio interface out to the MIDI in of your MIDI control device. I'm gonna do that now. All right, now we need to set the channel to the device that you wanna control. So on the Helix, hopefully you guys can see this. I know that it's under the menu. You probably, yeah, you probably aren't gonna be able to see this, but global settings, which is this button over here. And then you scroll over, so up here, go to MIDI and tempo, and you're gonna see bass MIDI channel. You can kinda of see that. I have this one set to channel four. Let me see if I can zoom in. See how it says MIDI channel four right there? So I have that set to MIDI channel four. I do recommend that you choose anything but MIDI channel one. I use three devices. Like I said, they're on channels two, three, and four. If you do watch the next video about programming lights using DMXs, that is set up to be read on channels 15 and 16, so you can't use those. But anyway, so set your device to read only on a specific channel. This one's gonna be channel four. So what I'm gonna do is here in Logic, right here, in this little drop down menu over here, I'm gonna set this to MIDI channel four. Now, only the stuff that I send here is only going to go out to channel four. Therefore, only my Helix is going to read this information. All right, now we're going to set up a program change. Like I said, let's go back to the Helix. This is the program change. It'll change between each specific song. If you aren't using a multi-effects unit like the Helix to change patches, this might not apply for you, and you might be able to skip ahead to the controller change option. Again, it really just depends on your device. Um, this is used to change your presets within the Helix or whatever device you're using. As you can see, I have every single song mapped out to a specific preset, which I do recommend doing. That way all your delays are automatically synced up to the correct tempo. And you can have slight changes, you know, like one song I might want a little more distortion, one I might want a little more delay, a little less delay, so on and so forth. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw in empty MIDI data at the very beginning of the song. So I'm gonna zoom in here, and again, pencil tool, command click, and then I'm gonna set my playhead right here at the beginning. And I'm gonna move it over just a hair, just a tiny bit, just to make sure that it does read the MIDI data correctly. All right, now you're gonna press D. It's gonna open up this event window over here. It's also this tab right here, if you wanna use that. See right here, you're gonna change this from notes to program change, and make sure your playhead's set right where you want to do the program change, and we're gonna add a program change. Now you're gonna to have to just try this out and kind of experiment a little bit, but as I turn, as you can see, when I change this value right here, the number value, so I go to one, See how it changed to a different setting? It went from, this, so this one is zero, this is one, this is two. So let me change this to two. See how it loaded preset two, or three in this case, because MIDI goes from zero to 127. So this first one is gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so on and so forth. The one that I wanna load is this one right here, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So let me set this one to five right here. 
and see how it loads that one. So let me set it back to this first one right here. Move my playhead back as soon as I hit play. Once it crosses this line, bam, it loads the new song. Make sense? All right, now that we have selected the correct song patch right here, we're going to change the individual effects in here. So within this song, I have all sorts of different effects. So this goes from a distortion clean. I have a delay on my dirty channel, a delay on my clean channel, a chorus. So I'm going to change the individual settings in here. So again, we're going to go over. Let's find a spot where this happens. I'm going to look at the audio really quick to find out when the chorus comes in. So right here, right at this in this measure, I want to turn my amp on. So again, I'm going to command click, draw in more MIDI data, set my playhead where I want to be, and go back over here. If you remember, D is the shortcut to open up the events window. We're going to change that to a controller change here. I'm going to add a controller change right there. This is where you're going to have to look through your manual, actually. So I have the Helix manual right here. It's on page 47 where it's going to tell you what all the stomp boxes do. So you can see here, 49 through 58 are the ones that we're looking for. So this one is going to be controller change 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, and 58. And then they have other ones like 59 is the expression, the toe switch, and, and stuff like that. Plus your looper controls, plus, plus different expression pedals. So right here, I need to set my amp needs to turn on. That needs to happen right there. So what I'm going to do is I know that that is so 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So I'm going to change this all the way up to 54. I don't recommend sweeping through that because then it's going to turn everything on and off like it just did right there. So the amp is off. It's, it's, it's picking up MIDI data as I'm changing these. But as I'm playing the song, the amp is going to be off. Now I hit play. See how it turned on the amp right there, right when I needed it to? So there you go. So that's how you change all of your patches. So then, you know, let's say, when does the distortion end? So right there, right here, I need the amp to turn off. So command click, again, hit D, oh, well, or just leave D open. Add a new controller change, change the number to 54. Now here's something weird is that the value right here of 127 in the helix manual it says you're supposed to set it below the halfway whatever the halfway is in order to turn it off in my helix anyways it turns on or off no matter what however i do like to set the value to 30 just so i can see oh this is an off command this is what i'm looking for let's go back over here so distortion is off turns on you can see right there it turned on for the chorus let it play through and then you'll see right here see how it turned it off the computer just told it to turn off make sense so again you're going to have to look through your manual to see how to change the presets on each individual device everything's going to be a little bit different but yeah you can turn on or off any effect that you want all right, and then just one more thing. There's a weird one. So when I use my uh, voice live, there is a, a different way that you do this. It's kind of odd. I've, most devices, it will work like this. However, for me, I have to load up the automation and then go to MIDI control in here. So for example, I believe it's 115. That's my step control feature. So I load that one up. And then you have to draw in the MIDI data. So like this. And so that's step one. And then right here, I have to move it up to step two. And again, MIDI is a little bit confusing because zero is technically one. And then one is technically two, usually with your presets. You don't usually have zero as a preset. Or for example, if I need to turn the harmony control on, you bring it all the way up. And then when you want the harmony to turn off, you bring it all the way down. Again, this is kind of an odd way. I've only seen the, the voice live do it that way. So again, hit A to open up your automation, click this tab here, and then go to your MIDI control and then manually change it right here. However, most of the time it's going to be this way. Just a few bonus things. Uh, one thing that I like to do, so remember if you watched my video, I have a sound check. So it, it tests the front of house so you can send backing tracks to front of house and click track to make sure that that's working. I also will do a control change in my Helix as well. So I make sure that it just turns on and off my delay. 
so I can make sure that I am getting MIDI data. So again, put something in your sound check and say, hey, I want to go to patch one, turn on and off the, the delay or the, my amp or whatever, just so you can make sure that you are receiving MIDI data. My other piece of advice is always have a way to control your presets manually just in case something goes wrong. Just, I mean, you're a musician, something's going to go wrong at some point. <laughs> you know, that's the way it goes. Anyway, I hope that helped you. Again, this is a very basic overview on how to do this. You can do this with other DAWs and other devices. I hope it helped you guys out. Thanks for watching.